You know, people in stadiums are really the same type of thing. They are born anew. They age, they reach their peak in their early to mid years, and later in life they start to get old and crumble. Some of these make it longer in life than others. And like people who will eventually die, every stadium that is built will die. There are very few stadiums that can stand the test of time, and almost none, if not any, are Monster Jam stadiums. Monster Jam has been a total of over 100 stadiums and even more arenas. And which stadiums have failed underneath? And which no longer exist? What happened to these former Monster Jam arenas are coming up right after this. So, just to get a couple things out of the way. Here's a couple rules on housekeeping just because I feel like it needs to be. Number one, the Monster Jam arena... Or the, or the stadium in question, is has to have hosted a Monster Jam event within the last 26 years. It cannot be an arena. And thirdly, it has to have been a Monster Jam event and cannot be hosted by any other series. Or rather, a series, not the most well-known series, in Monster Trucking. And it has to, and, Monster, and the arena has to be essentially like abandoned completely with no other tenant or completely demolished. So for people that are wanting Atlanta Fulton County Stadium or Paul Brown Stadium, sorry, they make the cut. The world's first indoor sports arena or stadium, whichever one you want to call it, the Houston Astrodome was one of the biggest stadiums of all time and just really how important it was for the world. And of course, Monster Jam wanted to get in on the action. They definitely were able to get it. Some of the wildest sports moments and memorable moments from their entire history. However, Due to the Oilers leaving in 1996 and the Astros leaving after the 2000 season, Monster Jam would be the only tenant for the next couple of years. However, the stadium is probably one of the most notable as being the debut of Greg Digger 14. However, in 2003, Reliant Stadium was opened for the Houston Texans, and that basically meant the Astrodome was pretty much done for. And the last event was held in November of 2002, as one of the wildest crashes still even today happened inside that arena. However, afterwards, it would essentially not be completely abandoned, would be used as storaging, and would even be used as a getaway situation or like a shelter for victims of Hurricane Katrina. However, in 2008, the stadium ended up getting closed and was essentially abandoned. It got partially demolished, the ticket booths were in 2012, but in 2019, a law, or rather really just a, a stint by the state of Texas, assign the arena as a national landmark and cannot be destroyed. It's likely to stand here for at least time. I bet you didn't know Monster Jam used to go to Three River Stadium or Pittsburgh before 2019. Well, they did. Monster Jam went here in the 80s, or rather Monster Trucks did. However, Monster Jam did come here in 1997 as a part of the IMJ episode, where hometown hero Air Attack won the event. However, pretty much other than that, there's not really much known for Monster Trucks, and with obviously the dual stadium exodus that started happening in the late 80s and early 2000s, or 90s and early 2000s, Rena got demolished in early 2001. This is another arena very few people even know hosts a monster truck event. But Aloha Stadium did host a monster truck event. Actually, this could be complete bull crap, but it's not. I'm not 100% sure. This is very low, but with the amount that I know, there was an event that probably did run there. Again, I could be seriously wrong about this. However, the arena is not known at all for host monster truck events. Instead, hosting Pro Bowls and the issues with the construction to go with steel construction has led to pervasive rust and essentially the stadium has been closed down and is likely set for demolition 
as trying to get upgrades for Aloha was $300 million. So the same is likely to be imploded very soon. A rare triple U stadium as both the Sonics of the NBA played here along with the NFL Seahawks and the MLB Mariners. The Seattle yeah. Kingdom was an arena that was hosted events for 25 years and smartly sheltered anything from the Seattle rain. Monster Jam did use to go to the arena, although it wasn't that well known for Monster Trucks. The problem was the stadium, though, was the roof issues. As you'll see later on down this list, roof issues will become a common occurrence. Not willing to pay for upgrades, the kingdom ended up getting slaved for demolition in 1999. The last Monster Jam event was held in 1999 along with the USA Trey event, as Greater pulled on one of the most iconic encores in Monster Jam history today, which essentially probably would be the official creation of Freestyle. The same got prolonged after the Seahawks somehow made the playoffs that year, and after the, one day after the World Finals, the arena finally was demolished. And the craziest part, the city of Seattle didn't pay off all the bonds used to repair the kingdom until 2015, 15 years after the demolition. All events were moved to the Tacoma Dome until in 2019 when Monster Jam made an insane return to Lubman Field. One of the most important stadiums for Monster Jam, as it would host the regular star of pretty much every single season. The Minneapolis Metrodome played host to some of the wildest and some of the best, most memorable moments of all time, including Amerson's main victory, which caught, which was only caused by probably one of the most suspicious throwaways I've ever seen in Monster Jam history. One of the greatest freestyle shows of all time, which also featured Donkey Kong's debut and a roof collapse. Yeah, the roof collapse happened in 2010, which canceled the 2011 show one event. And this essentially meant the arena was probably going to be set up for demolition, which happened at the beginning of 2013, as the final few events were held on at the arena in 2013. And after 2014, the stadium was demolished. U.S. Bank Stadium was built right on top of of the former site. Monster Jam still runs the arena. Okay, screw this racing format. This race for us sucks. Most famous event on the East Coast, the Georgia Dome played host to some of Monster Jam's most memorable moments in their entire history as well. Some of the greatest freestyle shows would take place, along with some very memorable runs. In 2010, the arena, or the same stadium, I keep saying arena instead of stadiums, the stadium would play host to the only live Monster Jam event that would ever be held on speed, and the third event of a live broadcast, because World Finals 2 and 3 pay-per-views yeah. happened. However, throughout its 25-year history, roof problems were definitely an issue, and after 2017, the final events, which included Monster Jam Show and a Supercross show, were held, and the arena was demolished three days after my birthday. I am not making that up. I bet you didn't know Monster Jam used to go to the Miami Orange Bowl. This is another one very few people know about, because Monster Jam went here only once as the event was more well known for the tragic accident of stunt performer Corey Scott. Monster Jam would not ever return to the arena as it would play host to other events and became a near permanent home of the Super Bowl earlier on in its history, as well as being a play host to rather a dolphin that was used in the stadium before Snowflake was kidnapped by the infamous Ray Fingal. The stadium finally got demolished in 2008, and the complete and utter dumpster fire of a stadium, Marlins Park, was built on top of this. Unfortunately, Monster Jam returned back to the <laughs> shit show in 2018, and they still run there in a complete disaster run. The stadium with a big hole in the roof so that God could watch Pablo Huffaker continually destroy his truck. Texas Stadium was another arena that no one knew hosted a monster truck event. 
how I would host too in 97 and 98 during the IMJ era and have some of the wilder crashes. Along with that, rain would become an issue though, and Monster Jam won the indoor stadium and they ran there. And uh, Monster Jam would not have any type of arena or stadium to go to in Dallas, Texas until the, they went to Reunion Arena in 2003. That's for another video. Texas Day would stay on and was originally supposed to be retractable, however the roof could not handle it, so it held the big hole in the roof. It was finally demolished in 2010. And nothing else is done with the site since. This is getting old, this is getting old, this is getting old. Tampa Stadium was another stadium that hosted Moss Jam event, but wasn't known for hosting Moss Jam or any USHRA much, if at all. Because, well, I mean, remember, this is a stadium made from concrete. I think you can probably guess what was to go wrong there. Ultimately, this became a bigger issue as other lawsuits that would fit much well with the team that the same supported were end up done. And in 1999, the stadium was demolished, luckily. And all events got moved to Raymond James Stadium, which the first event took place in 2000. And very fitting. Qualcomm Stadium, as it would go on to later be known as Jack Murphy Stadium or SDCCU, Qualcomm Stadium became one of the most famous stadiums in all of the West Coast, as it would host monster truck events from the 80s all the way to 2014. After 2014, Monster Jam would leave to go to Petco Park, as due to the growing distaste of dual-use stadiums, pretty much the entire arena ended up getting demolished in 2020. After a completion of the show went down a five years earlier, that should honestly is not even for Monster Jam, but it's insane enough that most San Diego fans are still just absolutely salty for this. Monster Jam moved into a new stadium that was much smaller, continuing Qualcomm Stadium's life style. That barely even counts. What the hell? San Diego people. The RCA Dome, aka Tom Mentz's hometown, which would also play host to the first time Brian Barthold drove Wolverine and Jim Culler debuted the Bel Air Avenger, played host to some of the wildest moments in the entire season for Monster Jam. This included some wild racing and insane freestyle moments. That included Tom Mentz barrel rolling multiple times and one of the greatest freestyle tandems of Pablo and Tom Mentz in 2008, which was originally supposed to be shown in on speed, but apparently, I guess just USHRA, around the USHRA, but due to issues and I guess just no backup plan, the event was never shown at all, although it was shown on Europe. It was lost for over a decade, but recently was recovered last year. There's actually a video on it. I have uploaded the full thing on my channel if you want to go check it out. Shitless pug. But anyways, the arena was something very similar to that with the Metrodome. Ultimately, they just deflated the roof and blew the place up in 2009, and eventually the arena would end up becoming a convention center from Lucas Oil Stadium. Costume still runs very well in the arena. A cautionary tale of pretty much uh, the life cycle of a stadium. The Pontiac Silver Dome is pretty much a microcosm that describes the entire state of Michigan. One of the most popular stadiums in all of history showcased one of Monster Truck's most iconic moments as one of the first car crushes would happen inside the arena. Along with that, other wild racing moments would go on from inside there, including some at least once every year, some type of crazy wild crash would happen. The final event became one of the wildest run-ins pretty much throughout the entire run as multiple drivers got injured and a lot more could have got, have if other things didn't go wrong. However, Monster Jam would leave the arena after 2006, which was the last tenant for the last five years because the Lions had already moved out in 2001, and after 2006, the stadium fell into a bizarre abandon. 
After many failed demolition proposals and attempts, the stadium was reopened in 2010 to host monster truck events. Yes, two monster truck events in 2010. It was closed down again in 2011, but more of temporarily. There was a plan I heard at one point, which could be completely yes, that they were going to turn this into a multi-purpose type of facility where one side would have an NHL ring and another basketball ring, two small arenas, and they would have a uh, soccer arena or stadium on top of it, deleting the roof, which had caused problems in the year this was supposed to take place in 2013. But the roof collapsed, turning the arena into a complete nightmare corpse. Finally, they decide to demolish the arena. Well, not exactly. After a second attempt, everything went to plan. After two years, it became an Amazon Ware Center, and almost all evidence that arena even existed here has been destroyed. Now for our final stadium. Though technically not abandoned or demolished, it's really just inactive for pretty much everything. And due to how huge the stadium had grown and how far the fall has been, it has to be mentioned. Sam Boyd Stadium was one of those famous stadiums pretty much in the entirety of Monster Jam and pretty much of motorsport. It would go on to host off road events throughout the 90s. However, in 2000, it would host the first officially named World Finals. For the next 19 years, it would host said events and would play again some of the wildest and most iconic moments in the stadium. However, by around 2017, something was made clear that the stadium just wasn't up to standards. For pretty much other sports other than motorsports, it just kind of looks pretty bad. And other than if there's dirt on it, anyways. So ultimately, it was decided that Moshim would move to a different area as it would become a rotational event, which eventually it went to Orlando, although now it could work at other arenas or stadiums. And with that being said, Monster Jam's last event in the stadium would be in October 2019. There was originally supposed to be a final event being the All-Star Challenge in 2020. However, because COVID and crap happened, everything went downhill. After 2020, the stadium has been cut off and pretty much no one knows what's going to happen, although demolition is likely intact. This just proves that no stadium is safe from anything in lifestyle. It and Randy Brown sucking. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, this was a fun video. And this is just something I've been inspired to do and been wanting to do for the last two, three years. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell for notifications. This is a three-part series of plan doing arenas and just miscellaneous stadiums and events uh, as well and venues overall. Hope you all enjoy. We'll see you all next time.